Hello, hello, great tens. Welcome, welcome to Academic Coordinate. In this video, we are looking at quadratic functions, or you might also call them parabolic functions, whichever name is going to help you to sleep at night. These functions are functions of this nature, right? There are days when they are having a good day and they are smiling like this. There are also days when they are having a bad day and they've got a sad uh, mouth like this. You know what I'm saying? But whichever way it is, we're going to figure it out together. So they are called quadratic functions because the highest power of x in its equation is 2. And hence, we call them quadratic functions. You know what I'm saying? The general or the standard form that you might see, especially in grade 10, is y is equal to ax squared plus q. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to figure out what that means exactly. Sometimes you might see f of x or g of x or h of x. So just take f of x as y because f of x enables you to appreciate that x is the independent, independent, what? Variable, variable. And then now f of x or y is the dependent, dependent, variable you know what i'm saying so basically what i'm saying to you guys is that sometimes you might see h of x or g of x you know what i'm saying so let not your heart fail if you see such things because they actually um enable you to appreciate this you know what i'm saying that x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable so in the standard form of this uh um function it's y is equal to ax squared plus q right so initially, then let's look at A. Now, A determines, determines the shape. You know what I'm saying? Such that if A is greater than zero, in other words, if A is positive, if A is a positive value, right? Remember, A is a constant. Then your graph will be like this, right? It's going to be smiling like that. However, now, if A is less than zero, in other words, your A is negative, is a negative value, right? Your graph will be uh, a bit sad like this. You know what I'm saying? So they're having a good day when A is positive and a bad day when A is negative, right? So um, when A is positive, these functions will have A minimum, minimum value right right here and then when a now is um negative these functions will have a maximum value do you guys get that so when a is positive the function uh faces upwards like this and then when a is negative the function faces downwards like this you know what i'm saying and i do also want us to look actually at the effect of a you know what I'm saying? So let's say we have got y is equals to x squared. Then we've got y is equals to 2x squared. And also we've got y is equals to, I don't know, 3x squared. You know? So basically this function, obviously the original function that we are used to. But now as we are increasing the value of a here, the integer a in this case, the function is going to be much more um, narrower. It's going to shrink. You know what I'm saying? So as the value of A is increasing, you know the function is going to be looking a bit smaller like this, like narrower in a way. You know what I'm saying? And also that is the same as far as the negative is concerned. So let's say Y is equal to minus X squared. Right? So it's just that this function is going to be like this now. You know what I'm saying? What about y is equals to a minus 2x squared? This function is going to be like this now. You know what I'm saying? And then lastly, y is equals to minus 3x squared. The same function is going to be facing downwards in this way. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. So basically, A determines the shape of the graph, right? Let's look now, guys. Since we have got y is equals to ax squared plus q, 
what in the world is this Q now? I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? What does it stand for? So Q now shifts the graph. It shifts the graph or the function vertically, vertically. Remember, you're in grade 10, so we're going to deal with the vertical shift. Vertical is like this, north to south or south to north, whichever one and assist you and stuff. Such that if Q is positive, right, the function is going to go up. Okay, let me just illustrate this. Okay, this is the x-axis. You will see an x here, grade 10. And then this is the y-axis. You're going to see a y there. You know what I'm saying? So if Q now, okay, this is the original function. There is the function here. So now, this is y is equals to x squared. y is equals to x squared. So now, if Q is positive here, it's going to shift the graph upwards. Let me actually get another color for this. So if Q is positive, um, your graph is going to be shifted upwards. Right? Q units. You know what I'm saying? And then here, there's going to be Q. Remember that here it was zero. So here there's going to be Q. You know what I'm saying? So your, your function or your graph was shifted, you know, Q units upwards when Q is positive. But now what, what happens, guys, when... What happens when Q is negative? In other words, less than zero. So if Q is negative, your function is going to come down. It's going to be shifted downward. Remember, we are shifting the blue function, the original function. It's coming now downward. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, that is going to affect the turning point of the function. The turning point is actually where the function turns. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so for the original function, this part where the x exists, this horizontal line here, and the y exists, um, this vertical line, when they, where they meet, is 0 and 0, right? So now, when the function shifts q units, right, it's going to affect the y value in the sense of that the turning point is going to be 0 and q, right, here, depending on whether q is positive or negative you know what i'm saying okay cool let's say let me just make an example let's say we had a function of y um y is equals to x squared plus 2 for example let's say we had a function like this so a function like this um Okay, it's going to look like this. So remember the original function, it was here, right? Then here it was 0. But now y is equals to x squared plus 2. If this whole function is going to be shifted, how many units? 2 units upwards. So the other function is going to be here, right? At 2. It's shifting, remember, vertically, guys, not horizontally in this case, right? Y'all are in grade 10, so I mean, hey. So basically, the turning point where this function turns, the coordinates of the turning point is going to be 0 and 2. But for the green one, which is the original function, the coordinates of the turning point were 0 and 0, right? So now it was shifted 2 units upwards, and hence you got that. So I trust now it rings a bell, you guys. So now we're going to speak about something um, which um, actually has got few marks, you know what I'm saying? Um, it can be like one or two marks, you know, but it's actually easier to get. It's called a domain and a range. Okay, guys, so the domain now, the domain, we are speaking of the set of X values, right? The range, we are speaking of the set of Y values or F of N. Or g of x so now we are looking here as to where exactly does the function exist right you know what i'm saying so looking at this graph is there any value of x that can make f of x undefined you know so in other words we are we want to see where is the function existing right so if you look here this um this is the x axis right it moves on and on and on and on until it's going to get to like positive infinity then even here 
um, this increases until negative infinity. Even down here for the for the range, this increases to negative infinity. Don't let these infinities uh, freak you out. So this increases to positive infinity. So basically, this increases and increases and, and, and increases right there. So now, if we want the domain of this function, this function is going to continue, right? It's going to continue, going to continue, and then it exists for all the values of x. So now the domain of the function, we are basically looking as to where the function exists. So the domain of the function, which is a set of x values, so x now is an element of real numbers. This element is certain, it just means x is a member of real numbers. You know what I'm saying? Or we might write your domain like this. This is another notation. X is an element, you know, from negative infinity up until infinity. In other words, X exists everywhere, right? So the domain of this function is such that X is an element of real numbers. In other words, X, um, the function exists everywhere, right? But what about the range now? As when we speak of the range, we speak of uh, a set of Y values, right? or f of x, or g of x, you know, or h of x, you know what I'm saying? So if we look at this graph, this graph exists up here. It also exists here at 0, for example. It exists 0 at 1, at 2, at 3, at 4, at whatever. This graph is existing here. So now, what exactly is the, is the range? So, y is greater or equals to 0. So when y is 0 and above, the function exists. But below that, the function does not necessarily exist. You know what I'm saying? Or you might write it in this way. y is an element from, okay, 0 here until infinity. This is the range as to where the function exists. You know what I'm saying? So basically, that is, that is the range, guys, of, of, of this actual function. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so basically there is a way that, you know, you can um, utilize to actually find the range of the function, you know. So, what do you have? You have y is equal to ax squared plus 2. Remember, for x, there is no x value that can cause this function to be undefined. Remember now, a function is undefined undefined if you divide let's say you have a here if you divide by zero this is undefined right and if you have the square root of a negative number right okay coming to the range now right how we're going to find the range this is actually the range but i, I want to show you in um, another root you know what i'm saying this is for this specific function y is equal to x squared what about this function in general now? So basically, we know that x squared is greater or equals to 0, right? So we want to get this function in some way. So we're going to multiply by a, both sides. x squared times a, it's a x squared. Greater or equal to 0 times a, it's 0, right? So we're going to add q now, both sides. x, a x squared plus q is greater or equals to 0 plus q is q. So as you can see that this is what is y here. So y is greater or equals to q right here. You know what I'm saying? So our q in this case for this function was 0. So basically the range, guys, we are looking at the y values right here. You know what I'm saying? As to where the graph is existing. So at y is equal to negative 1, the graph does not exist. Here it does not exist. You know what I'm saying? It only exists from 0 upwards. That is as far as the domain and the range is concerned. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. So basically, guys, that is uh, in a nutshell an, an, an introduction of um, um, quadratic functions. And also, another thing that I would like to put to you guys before we can even um, look any further is that Okay, we've got the domain and the range. Now, we, what are the intercepts, right? So the intercept, we've got the y-intercept. Intercept, 
So basically what this means, let me just put it in clear perspective here. Remember guys, this is the y axis, right? And this is the x axis, you know what I'm saying? So basically, um, the coordinates here is 0 and 0. This is called the origin. Yeah? So the equation of this line, the y axis is x is equals to 0, right? And the equation of this line, which is the y axis, is what? y is equals to 0. So now, when we are saying we are looking for the y intercept or the coordinate of the y intercept, we are looking for the coordinate where the function um, cuts the y axis. You know what I'm saying? So for the y intercept, we let x equals to 0. Why? Because the graph is going to cut this part. You know what I'm saying? So the part that it cut is the line which is x is equals to 0. And hence, we say let x equals to what? Equals to 0. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. So, um, for example, if we had a function f of f of x, let me just use the f of f as we had here, ax squared plus q. For the, for the y-intercept, we're going to say f of 0. You see, we let x equals to 0. f of 0 is equals to a into 0 squared plus q. So now f of 0 is equals to q. What is the y-intercept? Is 0 and q. You know what I'm saying? So in other words, the function is going to cut the y-axis at 0 and q. Remember, x will always equals to 0 at the y-axis because the equation of the y-axis is um, that right there. It's x is equal to 0. Or let's actually do an actual function so that you guys can actually appreciate these things. So let's say you had f of x is equal to, I don't know, x squared, um, I don't know, minus 4, for example. Remember, the function of f of x is shifted 4 units downward. So let's say we're using this. So now to find the y-intercept here, we're going to say f of 0 is equals to what? 0, remember now for x, squared minus 4. So what this equals to is minus 4. So f of 0 is equals to minus 4. What is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is 0 and minus 4. Do you guys see that? So the function is going to cut somewhere here. You know what I'm saying? What about the x-intercept? I'm sure you guys can guess now here as to what, what in the world is happening. As far as the x-intercept is concerned, intercept is concerned, we are looking for the value or the values where the function will touch, touch, sorry, yeah, touch or cut the x-axis. You know what I'm saying? So we can find one value. Or we can find two values in this case. You know what I'm saying? Because if we find one value, remember grade 10, if there is one value, the function is just going to touch. So we're going to find one x value. But if we find two values, the function is going to cut. You know, the x as it cut it here and here. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get a negative and a positive value. So Remember, f of x is equals to what? f of x is equals to ax squared plus q. So now for this one, we're going to let, let what? Let f of x equals to 0 or let y equals to 0. Depending on whether what, whatever you're given, maybe h of x or whatever, you know, just let that equals to 0, the dependent variable equals to 0 because the equation of this line is y is equals to 0. You know what I'm saying? So basically, it's actually going to be 0 is equals to ax squared plus q. And then after here now, guys, we're going to solve for x, the x that we are normally used to, you know, in question 1. You know what I'm saying? So let's use the function that we had there. So it's um, f of x is equals to what? It's equals to um, x squared minus 4. You know? So we let f of x equals to 0. So that means it's going to be 0 equals to x squared minus 4. So now this, you recognize this from question 1. 
you know the solve for x x squared minus 4 is equals to 0 so now you can just factorize here let me lift up my page there is x and x there then you can have 2 this is the difference of 2 squared 2 squares plus and minus equals to 0 so either x is equals to minus 2 or x is equals to 2 you know what i'm saying so what this means is that here it's going to be 2 here it's going to be minus 2 so now the x intercept is going to be minus 2 and 0 and 2 and 0 you know what i'm saying these are going to be the x intercepts of this particular function so just remember guys that we are you, we are looking for the values where the function are either cutting um or touching the x axis those are the x intercepts now guys we want to look at the turning point of the graph you know what i'm saying so imagine you are standing right there and then you've got a ball in your hand and then you throw the ball to your friend for example then your friend maybe is standing here then your friend catches the ball i never claimed to be an artist guys if you can see this forms a a parabolic graph you know then your ball turns here right same applies in mathematics now the turning point of your graph is where your graph turns you see so the turning point of this graph is this one remember now guys that if a is greater than zero your turning point will be here you know depending on whether your graph was shifted up or downwards and everything like that you know so your graph is f of x is equals to a x squared plus uh plus what plus q so your turning point now remember that your graph is here on the what on the um um on the y axis you know what i'm saying so as far as the grade 10 syllabus is concerned right your graph will shift vertically you know what i'm saying so basically your turning point here will be zero because it's here on the y axis and q you know what i'm saying if a is greater than zero you will have a turning point like this there will be a turning point and then now if a is less than zero um you will also have zero and q as far as the turning point is concerned however it's going to be like this now like, just like your ball that is there so let's look at the graphs that at the f of x that we've been uh, working with here right at f of x is equals to x squared minus 4 what will be the turning point of this the turning point of this we know that it's a graph of this nature you know what i'm saying and then um here it's minus four right so the turning point of this graph is going to be what zero and minus four minus four remember that here your q is minus four so there is your turning point right there okay guys and lastly now uh, as far as parabolic graphs are concerned we have got what we call the axis of symmetry right the axis of symmetry divides your graph in two you know what i'm saying so this is the axis of symmetry right so if, remember now if your graph is only shifted vertically the axis of symmetry here is going to be the y axis you know what i'm saying it's going to be the y axis and what is the y axis the y axis is x is equal to zero so if they asked you for the axis axis of symmetry symmetry just know that it's going to be x is equal to zero because your function was shifted now vertically right and last but not least guys to sketch your function you know to sketch your function you need to know the sign you need to know if a is positive is positive your function is going to be like this if a is negative your function is going to be like this you know so that is very much important and then you find the y intercept the y intercept you let what x equals to zero then find it then you find the x intercept for the x intercept what do you do you let y equals to zero then solve for x you know what i'm saying 
and then also your turning point of the graph so it's going to be zero and q you know what i'm saying and then the axis of symmetry of symmetry equals to what um it's going to be x equals to zero you know what i'm saying so i trust guys that this rings a bell you know so i would like us to look at some few examples you know on the next uh video but i don't know if i must continue with this video where we can actually apply these things in great detail otherwise um do stay cool and enjoy the rest of your day stay tuned for the next video where we're going to be tackling this in in greater detail